To be fair, I should have done this video before I did the Spider-Man No Way Home video. That would have made sense, but then again, I am a, bit, a little bit of an idiot. Who am I? Well, I am Berryman, and this is 10 Things Wrong With. Venom Let There Be Carnage is a 2021 American superhero film featuring the Marvel Comics character Venom. The film tells the story of Eddie Brock, a former reporter, and the alien symbiote Venom, who must learn to get along in their new combined state. All while serial killer Cletus Cassidy becomes a new host to a new symbiote called Carnage, who is vowed revenge on both Venom and Eddie Brock. Despite earning less money than its predecessor, the film was still classed as a box office success. It did receive mixed reviews from the critics, although many of them, including me, class it as an improvement over its predecessor. But what have I found wrong with this film? Well, let me explain. 10 things wrong with Venom, let there be carnage. Number 10, hair. So in this film, Woody Harrison plays Cletus Cassidy brilliantly. However, there was one thing I found really annoying about his performance. Well, actually it wasn't his performance, it was his appearance, and that was his hair. Now, in the post credit scene in the first film, his hair was perfect. It looked like the character from the comics. But in this film, it looks too neat, too nice. Remember, this is a serial killer, a deranged serial killer at that. He wouldn't make his hair look nice and neat. It was messy, just like it was in the post credit scene for the first film. Now, this change is actually down to Woody Harrison himself because in his opinion, the wig that he wore in the first film looked amateurish and he preferred the look in this one. Sorry Woody, you're a brilliant actor, but you did get that one wrong. It looked better in the first film. Number nine, death penalty. So Cassidy is a death row inmate and he's in the state of California in the real life prison that is currently in the process of being closed down where executions are carried out. Notice what I said there, it's in the process of being closed down. The reason being is nobody has been executed in the state of California since 2006. Now, the death penalty still technically applies, but it's sort of on hold. They've not executed anyone and it's in the process of being repelled. Now, there are some states in the United States that do still have executions, Texas being one of them. Now, what they could have done, just to make it that little bit of accuracy, is actually have the execution being carried out in Texas and then make it their way to San Francisco. That would have actually made sense, although I would have then picked it up for not being comic accurate. To be fair, the film was on a lose-lose situation when it came to that one. Number eight, body. So when Carnage finally appears, it is awesome. You see Carnage live action for the very first time. It's amazing. He does have this one trick which did confuse the hell out of me. He is shot a few times. And what does Carnage do? He opens his body up to let the body through, which looks awesome, but it raises the question. Where's Cassidy's body? Because I can't do it. I really can't open myself up. The body would still be there. So yeah, where did his body go? Any explanations, any theories, let me know. Number seven, blood. So in the same sort of scene, you see absolute carnage. That's why he gets his name. And it is awesome, he's running through all the guards, maybe some prisoners, slicing and dicing them. It's amazing except there's no blood. Now, I have accidentally, a long time ago, cut myself with a knife, and oh my God, that bleeds to high heaven. My arm was covered in blood for something that was just essentially a little nick. We've all had paper cuts, so where was all the blood? Number six, The Matrix. Uh, Berryman, didn't you do The Matrix a few weeks ago? Well, yes, fans, I did do that a few weeks ago, but this film is getting something wrong because of The Matrix. So during the film, there's a part where they're high up in the sky, looking out along the skyline of San Francisco, which is beautiful, I might add. Now, in that scene, there is a couple of helicopters flying around that are looking for carnage, except that wasn't actually in the script. In fact, what was supposed to happen, it was a clear skyline, still would have been beautiful. So what are those helicopters? 
Well, those helicopters are actually in the process of filming The Matrix Resurrections. Seriously, in this film, you are watching them film another film. Also for a rival company as well, I might add. So as much as it adds something to the film, it's still wrong that you filmed a rival company's film. And if you haven't seen my review on that, go check that out as well. Number five, hosts. In the film, Eddie Brock and Venom have a bit of a lover's tiff and Venom goes off in a bit of a strop. I'm calling it a strop because that's what my missus says when I do it, so I'm gonna call it a strop. Now, Venom can't survive on his own, so he goes from host to host to host. The reason why he's going from host to host to host is because these hosts get weaker and he can't survive for long in them. So he jumps from people to people. So my question would be, did those hosts survive? Let's face it, Venom has had no issues about killing innocent people before. He's got what he wanted, he jumps to the next host. So, did these people survive or not? Number four, Carnage's strength. So, I'm going on to the bits that they got wrong from the comics, but one thing Carnage was in the comics was absolutely strong. He was way too strong for Venom. So much so that Venom had to buy the bullet and team up with Spider-Man, and they only just managed to defeat him. Quite a few times, this has repeated itself in the comics. Yet, Venom goes one-on-one -on -one with Carnage and eventually beats him. <sighs> Doesn't really make much sense. When the comic says Carnage is stronger, even Venom runs away saying, oh, that's a red one, and runs away. <sighs> Was Carnage really stronger or not? Number three, Venom v Carnage. Let's face it, we all watched this film for this one fight. And that's the problem, there was only one fight. The fact that they had this fight, which was the final act of the film, great, except I wanted two. I wanted at least one other fight where Carnage was beating, Venom runs away, regroups and comes back and finally wins. Now they did sort of do that, but let's face it, it was one fight. It wasn't two different fights in two different parts of the film. And I found that wrong. I didn't like there was only one. I wanted at least two fights. Am I on my own on that one? Number two, length. The length of this film is 97 minutes long. Technically, this is the second shortest Marvel film after one of the Fantastic Four films, which was 93 minutes. This film was a bit too short, and as a result, it did get a feeling of it was a little bit rushed. Now, like I said in my previous entry, there was only one fight. You could have expanded the film to two hours so we could have two fights. Not make the film as rushed. Have the pacing slow down, not much, just a tad little bit. It might have been a little bit more enjoyable. Number one, wasted post credit scene. So when I watched this film, this post credit scene got me so hyped up, it was unbelievable that Venom traveled worlds and was in the MCU. How awesome was that? Venom recognized Spider-Man. How awesome was that? Our appetites were wet. We were all excited to see Tom Holland's Spider-Man and Tom Hardy's Venom go at it. Especially when it came out, it was confirmed that that scene was filmed on the same set as No Way Home. That's it, it's confirmed. Tom Hardy's in the MCU, we cannot wait. It didn't happen. Now, I know, I know I said this in the No Way Home video, but the point stands, it was that annoying that we never got it. That was too teasing with no payoff whatsoever. Final thoughts. So here are my thoughts on this film. Essentially, we have a sequel and a buddy cop film. That's what we've actually got, because the interaction between Venom and Tom Hardy, or should I say Tom Hardy and Tom Hardy, is fantastic. It's funny, I loved it, and I was laughing all the way through this film. Now, on one hand, that is wrong, because I shouldn't be, but it was designed to be, so I haven't actually put that as a thing wrong with it. But Venom, he is a lethal protector. He is an anti-hero. He's a good guy, but doesn't mind getting his hands dirty. 
That's what we wanted. We don't get that in this film, we never got that in the last film. But they've added this comedy element to it, which pays off, and I enjoyed it. Let's face it, Sonny and Cher, we were all heartbroken when he gave them away. Once again, the acting in this film is superb, the interactions between the cast is absolutely brilliant, and the soundtrack was fantastic, and I did think the casting of Woody Harrison was brilliant as well. So there is so much good for it. However, I do feel it's, it, there's something missing. I can't quite my, put my finger on it. There does get this feeling there is something missing. Yes, I've said it feels a little bit rushed. Yes, the film's too short. Maybe if they did extend it out and make it two hours long, it would be a lot better film and a more enjoyable film. But that's the thing. It is still an enjoyable film. I, well, I enjoyed it. So what am I going to rank it? I can't be too nice on this film, but it's still a good film, so I'm gonna... I'm a little bit torn, so I'm gonna play it a bit safe this week. I'm going to give it a six out of 10 berries. Or should it be seven? No, we'll stick with six. But that's my opinions and that's my thoughts. What do you think of this film? Let me know in the comments below, along with your rating out of 10. Now, on to next week. We are going to do a film that I should have actually done a few weeks ago, that the sequel is currently number one in the cinema. Want to know what I mean? Well, come back next week to find out. Till then, take care.